Hello everybody, this is Gare McGar. welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For the purposes of today's video, we are going to bring you 99 tips and tricks that will enhance the way you play the game. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Cave doggies and rock crabs have a chance to drop cherry bombs. The reason why cherry bombs are so underrated is because they can one-shot any node in the game despite being a starter bomb. Let's put a cherry bomb down here in the Skull Cavern just to show you that even though it's just a cherry bomb and it has a small explosion, it will take out iridium nodes no problem. Next up, did you know that the secondary function of your blade is a parry function and it'll actually make you impervious to damage regardless of where the enemy strikes you? Did you know that you can purchase a training rod from Willy and you don't need to be any sort of level in fishing? Using a training rod you can very quickly accumulate experience because it'll just give you starter fish and it's a very easy way to get perfects which gives you a huge XP multiplier. Did you know that you can actually put driftwood into a wood chipper and it will give you back regular wood? This is a great way to stock up on wood, especially if you need it to upgrade buildings or make various recipes that the game has to offer. Driftwood is regularly obtained through fishing. The next great tip I have for you today is the Glorious Tea Sapling. You can learn the recipe for this by reaching two hearts with Caroline. And this is one of the best money makers in the game, hands down. Let's have a look at the price we're going to get for tea saplings here. Each tea sapling is worth 500 gold and you can make hundreds of these, no problem at all. Next up, did you know that if you unlock the hardened version of the mines, you can just spam floor 1 and amass hundreds of iridium ore on a daily basis. Radioactive bars go for 4500 gold per bar if you have the blacksmith perk, meaning you can get tons of money from this. The napalm ring will not only destroy mummies, but it will also explode nodes around them, meaning this is the perfect ring to kill mummies. Next up, let's talk about the Extended Family Key Quest. This quest is actually a bit broken, as you can catch multiple of the legendary fish as long as the quest is active. So we can literally spend the whole day fishing up the Legend 2 if we so wish. And Iridium Legend 2 sells for 15,000 gold. Using this method, you can amass tons of money. Next up, let's talk about the Gatherer and Botanist professions. Using Gatherer, you have a chance to pick up double the truffle, and using Botanist, you're always going to get an Iridium Star truffle, which means you can sell these for an enormous amount of money in the game. On the 13th, you can actually get your hands on lovely strawberry seeds, but you can actually get three harvests of strawberry seeds if you plant them using Speed Grow. Let's do a quick test here. If we plant strawberries on the 13th with speed grow, that means the first harvest will be on the 20th. This means the second harvest will be on the 24th, and the last harvest for these lovely strawberries will be on the 28th. Using this method, not only will you get three harvests of strawberries, which are going to make a lot more money in the process. Next up, let's talk about the importance of leaving tree stumps. The first reason you should leave tree stumps is because they only give you 1 XP when you break one down, but tree stumps will also generate seeds around them, meaning more trees will grow. This means you can stock up on more wood. Next up, let's talk about the difference between the steel, the gold and the iridium pickaxe. Both the steel and the gold pickaxe require two swings to break open regular nodes in the skull cavern. However, the iridium pickaxe will require just one swing. On the last day of each season, you can go to Ginger Island and you can purchase as many galaxy souls as you wish provided you have radioactive bars to do so. Use galaxy souls to upgrade galaxy weapons to infinity weapons. You can actually fish up an infinite supply of void mayonnaise as long as you do not give it to the goblin. All you have to do is fish up a void mayonnaise, put it into the chest, rinse and repeat, and you can stock up on hundreds if not thousands of void mayonnaise every couple of days. 462 gold for each void mayonnaise. Did you know that if you take a speed buff item, that buff also applies to your lovely travel companion, the horse. You can actually get around the map a lot faster this way, utilizing this method. You can actually put winter roots and common mushrooms into seed makers and you will get back winter seeds and fall seeds. This is a great way to not only stock up on seeds but also for a chance to get an ancient seed very early in the game. You can also utilize this method to make a lot more tea saplings which sell for extraordinary amounts of money. Enchant your weapon with the amethyst and it will add a knockback to your weapon meaning you can knock back enemies a lot more. Enchant your weapon with the aquamarine and you can add a critical hit chance to your weapon. Enchant your weapon with the topaz and you will add defense to your weapon, meaning you're much harder to take down. Enchant your weapon with the jade and you will add extra crit damage, which is really good for weapons that have a high crit chance. If you enchant your weapon with the emerald, it'll add weapon speed, 
the ruby will add attack power, and finally, the diamond will enchant your weapon with a random assortment of stats. You can fish up a decorative trash can from the fountain, it's a really cool aesthetic for your farm. If you have plus 12 in foraging, which can be achieved through max foraging and food buffs, you can actually get a total of 4 salmon berries per bush. My advice is to keep these and not sell them as they don't sell for much. Next up, if you put wheat in your farm, you can use it as a placeholder so you don't have to re the ground when you enter into fall, saving you lots of time and energy. If your horse is placed correctly, you can actually use it to purchase ice cream from the ice cream stand regardless of what season it is in the game. Using a geode crusher, you can duplicate the item that Clint last broke out of a geode. We just got star shards here from Clint, so if we put an omni geode into the geode crusher, it will give us back a star shard. This can be used for any mineral that Clint breaks out of a geode. Using the forge on Ginger Island, you can transfer the stats from one weapon to another. We just transferred the stats here from the rusty sword to our lovely infinity blade. <laughs> now we have the most useless infinity blade in the game. If you don't like the changes, you can simply unforge the item back to its original state. If you have maxed out fishing, use a seafoam pudding with a key seasoning and you will have enough range and your fishing skill to fish up the Iridium Crobus. This is one of the coolest aesthetics in the game, in my opinion. All around the bathhouse area and all over the desert and the quarry are great places to make huge tree farms if you need wood. If we go to Pierre here we can purchase sunflower seeds for 200 gold but if you go to the Georgia Mart you can actually purchase the same sunflower seeds for 100 gold. This is an absolute huge saving that you can make in the game. Every time you harvest a sunflower, you can get a seed back. This means you can harvest your sunflowers over and over again, and you can sell the sunflowers you just harvested, meaning more profit for you. Did you know that if you go to Robin here, you can get her to construct a cabin that's used for co-op play, but you can also make the cabin without using cooperative play and use it as a shed. Cabins are built instantaneous, and they have a nice bit of space inside for you to place your lovely processing machines. Did you know that when you go into the likes of the Skull Cavern or if you're running around the map, you can actually zoom out of your game permanently so you can increase your range of view dramatically. This is especially handy for caves so you can see ladders. You can fish up a really cool lifesaver aesthetic here just from the waters around Willy's boat to Texas Ginger Island. This makes for a really cool aesthetic for your farm. The beach will hold all forages and generates for one whole week up until Saturday. So make sure you get them before Sunday. Iridium sprinklers aren't the only sprinklers that can be upgraded in Stardew Valley. You can also upgrade regular sprinklers and quality sprinklers. Putting pressure nozzles on them will upgrade them one tier each, meaning they can cover a lot more tiles for you. The telephone is an absolutely magnificent item you should purchase off Robin as quickly as possible. Using the telephone, you can ring Marnie, for example, or other NPCs in Stardew Valley, and they will tell you if they're open or not. If you complete the monster eradication goals for Ginger Island, you can also ring Marlin, and you can get him to collect items you've lost in the mines, saving you a trip to the Adventurers Guild. Next up, let's talk about organization. The hub level of the mines here can actually be filled up to the top with processing machines, chests and all manner of items that will help you get deeper in the mines every time you go down. As we can see here we have furnaces, geode crushers and we have a lovely shipping bin that we can use. Next up, let's talk about the Crusader enchantment. Not only will it do additional damage to other dead enemies such as mummies and ghosts, but also means mummies cannot regenerate when defeated. If you have fish that aren't worth a whole lot of money, you can very easily turn them into sashimi that can sell for a lot more money than regular fish such as chubs and carps. Using this method, you can make a lot more money out of fishing. Next up, let's talk about how good the mushroom cave actually is. Not only can you place processing machines in the mushroom cave, but you can process all your common mushrooms into fall seeds, meaning huge profits for you when you make more saplings. Did you know that you can put corn, sunflower seeds and sunflowers into oil makers and you can get back cooking oil which is a very common ingredient needed to make a lot of dishes in Stardew Valley. If you have obtained enough key gems you can purchase a really cool item for your wallet called the key to the city. This means you can access most of the NPCs in the game in the very early hours. As we can see here we can get into Mary and Clint and Pierre from 6 o'clock onwards and we can do upgrades and purchase items before the day even starts for most people. It only takes a crystallarium to replicate a quartz in 7 in-game hours. You can get 3 stacks of quartz each day and then you can go to the desert trader and purchase hundreds and thousands of bombs. 
Treat yourself to a magic rock candy on Thursdays from the Desert Shredder. All you need is three prismatic shards. The huge luck increase you get from this item will greatly increase the odds of you finding treasure rooms. And you can get magnificent items from these treasure rooms such as Iridium Sprinklers, Prismatic Shards, Auto Grabbers and Auto Petters. Did you know that the fishing XP multiplier stack in Stardew Valley? That means if you get a treasure chest and if you get a perfect on a fish, you will get the XP multipliers for both, meaning you're going to get at least four times the XP for catching a fish. Did you know from floor 81 to 100 you have a chance to get a mushroom floor? You know it's a mushroom floor if you see green lanterns lit up all around the cave. You cannot plant crops outside of your farm unless you're on Ginger Island, but you can actually put down garden pots and tea saplings all over the map. Did you know that if you put a spinner and a treasure hunter into a deconstructor, you will get back the exact mats you needed to make it in the first place? This way, you'll never run out of spinners or treasure hunters if your tackle gets low in durability. If you have loads of jays, you can trade them in for staircases at the Desert Trader every Sunday. So if you have hundreds of jades, make sure you get those staircases because this will allow you to spam the Skull Cavern and the hardened version of the mines for great prices. Did you know that in the regular version of the mines, the bugs have a 0.5% chance to drop an ancient seed? So if you want to get ancient seeds early, then take out your weapon, go to the starter version of the mines and start killing some insects. Fishing up a legendary fish will reward you with 5 times the fishing XP. This can be stacked with getting a treasure chest and perfect catch. Did you know you can put hardwood into a wood chipper? This will give you back tons of regular wood. The best way to go about regular wood is to make a huge tree farm with mahogany trees get the hardwood and convert it back into regular wood you'll never need wood again junimos can pass through trellises without any problems at all did you know if you enchant your regular axe with powerful enchant you can break open large tree stumps all over the map did you know if you put a staircase inside a deconstructor you can get back 99 stone this is a magnificent way to stock up on stone if you need it for various projects around your farm when you get to Ginger Island, there's a chance you can get dragon scale boots or mermaid boots from the chests within the Volcano Cave. These are the best armor shoes you can acquire in the game. The best advice I can give for any new Stardew Valley player starting out in the game if you want to make money fast, fish until you reach fishing level 10, get the angler profession and then sell all your fish once you have the level 10 fishing. This way, you'll get a lot more money for the fish that you pulled out of the water. Junimos change colour based on the gem that you have in their Junimo hut. We have a ruby at the moment, so the Junimos are red. If I put in an emerald, for example, the Junimos turn green. And if you put in a prismatic shard, the Junimos will cycle through different colours. This makes for a great aesthetic to your farm. Introduction is one of the first quests you get in the game where you have to meet all the NPCs in Stardew Valley. Best way to do this is to wait until the 13th and you can meet all the NPCs no problem. And you can even get into Pierre by going up and around the top of his house. Gordon Lewis statue can actually activate a secret scene. If you put the statue in the square, you'll get a letter from Mayor Lewis with 750 gold advising you to keep quiet. You can also get the statue back inside Mayor Lewis's house after he takes it away. <laughs> Did you know if you reach 8 hearts with Shane, you can get your hands on blue chickens? If you purchase chickens from Marnie, there's a chance she'll give you a blue chicken instead of a white or a brown chicken. If you don't like the way your shoes are, you can actually transfer stats from one shoe to the other. For example, we just transferred the stats from a dragon scale shoe to a leprechaun shoe, meaning we can now walk around in style. When you get your first dinosaur egg, because it's so rare, my advice is to put it into an incubator in your coop and hatch the first dinosaur. Have that mature and lay another dinosaur egg and then give that one to Gunther. Next up, did you know if you choose the shepherd profession, sheep produce wool faster, but they would also produce higher quality wool at a more regular rate. A sheep with maxed out hearts and the profession means you can get wool every single day and there's a very good chance it'll be iridium wool which sells for quite a lot of money. Next up let's talk about the craft master achievement. Craft every item in the game. An easy way to do this is to select the option show advanced crafting information. This will tell you how many times you've crafted an item in your inventory making it very easy to focus on the items you need to craft. Next up, let's talk about Iridium Mayonnaise. If you get an Iridium Ostrich Egg, you can put that into a mayonnaise machine for Iridium Mayonnaise. This is the only way you can get Iridium Mayonnaise. Did you know that a pig with max on hearts has a 66% chance to find an additional truffle after it's found its first? The pig will keep searching for additional truffles until it fails at 66% check. 
The Desert Trader has a rotating stock. You can get hay for Omni Geodes on Monday. You can get fibre for stone on Tuesday. You can get cloth for aquamarines on Wednesday. And you can also get cheese by trading in emeralds on Friday, which is a great heatable food. You can also get all different types of seeds by trading in other seeds on Saturday. Next up, let's talk about how to get all the rare crows. You can get the first one from the Flower Dance event. You can get the second and third rare crow by giving in artifacts to Gunther. You can get the next rare crow then by going to the Stardew Valley Fair. The next rare crow you can acquire through the Halloween event. You can get the Snowman rare crow through the Festival of Ice event. And you can also get a cool rare crow from the Dwarf here in the mines, which is a representation of the Dwarf. And you can also get the alien rare crow from Key's Casino using Key Coins. Once you assemble all the rare crows, you can then make the Deluxe Scarecrow, which covers a lot more tiles than the regular rare crows. Placing a wicked statue in your slime hutch will prevent the witch from converting your slimes into black slimes. Deluxe Retaining Soil has a 100% chance to keep crops hydrated. If you combine this with the garden pot, and if you put crops into the garden pot that regrow all the time, you can make huge profits every couple of days. What you see here is a list of all the crops that can regrow in the game. You can make some really cool items using the sewing machine. If you use a pearl with cloth, you can make the bridal veil. If you use a bouquet with cloth, you can make a really cool suit. If you use a radioactive bar with cloth, you can make the really cool radioactive goggles. And if you use a prismatic shard with cloth, you can make really cool prismatic clothing. This makes for great aesthetics in the game. The bridal veil and suit are really cool, especially if you want to get married. Next up, did you know that if a chest has items inside it, you can actually push the chest along, but you can't push it into water. This is a great way to move the chest if you don't want to take everything out. Solar panels are an absolutely magnificent item that generate batteries every couple of days. Best place to put these are in the desert, as the desert never gets rainy days. The crafting bench makes crafting items very easy, as the crafting bench will connect the chests that are very close to it, meaning you can make tons of items provided you have the mats stored away in all your chests. This makes getting that horrendous crafting achievement to craft every item much easier. A magnificent ring combination here is combining the burglar ring with the java ring. This means that any enemy in the game has a very good chance to drop coffee and triple shot expressos. Best way to stock up on coffee and triple shot expressos is to come down here into the regular mines and just farm the insects as they're very weak and you can stock up on hundreds and thousands of coffees and triple shot expressos to use or to sell. If it's very late or very early and Robin isn't around but you really want to rearrange your farm, you can do just that using the magical terminal inside the wizard's tower. This is really handy if you need to rearrange your farm but you don't want to wait around for Robin. Next up, did you know that Crobus sells an Iridium Sprinkler every Friday? This is an absolutely amazing item. Next up, did you know that if you have prismatic clothes on and if you go into the bat house here, you'll get lovely prismatic swimwear. Did you know you can stack multiple buffs in the game? Let's take a monster musk. Now we're going to take an oil of garlic. On top of that, we're going to take our lovely magic rock candy. And on top of that, we can even take another consumable. So we're going to take the ginger ale. Look at all the buffs that we have. Putting pathways down in the game means gathering items is much easier as debris doesn't spawn where the paths are. This way, you can harvest all your lovely items very quickly. Also, walking along your path in your farm increases your speed by 0.2%. After you attain perfection, if you have key gems, you can purchase golden eggs which hatch into golden chickens from Key Secret Walnut Room. These are one of the best animals in the game. If you don't have key gems, you can also purchase the golden egg for 100,000 gold off Mary. Golden chickens generate golden eggs every single day, which you can convert into tons of mayonnaise for loads of money. Next up, did you know if you leave your animals out at night, there is a chance that the wolves will come and kill your lovely animals. Next up, if you want to get a rainy day in winter, just activate a rain totem. This is especially helpful if you want to get married in winter and you need a mermaid's pendant. Once you reach two hearts with Caroline, you can get access to her lovely sunroom. This has a tea sapling inside that you can harvest at the end of each season. Next up, did you know you can get a dinosaur egg from the crane game? It's hidden just on the bush there to the left. And that bush also has other rare items you can get too, like mega bombs and warp totems. Next up, did you know that going to the saloon on a Friday afternoon is one of the best ways to get in touch with all of the NPCs the Stardew Valley has to offer? This is especially helpful if you need to get friendship points and you had a busy week. 
Did you know if you give someone a gift on their birthday, you will get eight times the friendship point that, that gift is worth? You'll get even more if it's an Iridium Star loved gift. Also, if you take someone to the cinema and if they really love the movie and if they love the snack you've given them, they'll get an extra 250 friendship points, meaning you can get a maximum of four hearts on any given day. Did you know you can purchase a George color from the saloon for 75 gold? I didn't know this one for a long time. <laughs> The Mutant Buglier is a great place to get fibre, but if you come in here with the Haymaker enchant, it's also a great place to get hay. If you enchant your weapon with the Bug Killer, you can now kill the bugs in the Skull Cavern that used to be invincible. They're not so invincible anymore, are they? <laughs> Next up, did you know if Krobus moves into you, you can still access his shop down in the sores. Instead of Krobus, there'll just be a really cool chest, and you can just use that chest then to get access to his rotating stock, including his lovely Star Drop. Did you know if you equipped the staircase uh, in your pants that item, you will get the lucky purple trim shorts? If you speak to Marnie with the shorts on, she let out a little snigger. And if you talk to Mary Lewis with the pants on, he let out a huge yelp. <laughs> Did you know you can break open the huge rocks in the mines by just using a regular pickaxe? Even though these rocks are absolutely huge, any sort of pickaxe will do the job for you no problem. Did you know that the haunted skull enemy that you fight in the quarry cave has a chance to drop a magic rock candy, which is the rarest consumable that you can get from an enemy in the game. It's also the strongest consumable. Did you know if you use a mega bomb or any bomb, you can blow away your crops, but it won't blow away your lovely fertilizer or speed grow that you have planted on the ground. This is a great opportunity to plant new crops if you want to replace existing crops that you have on your farm. Did you know that you can actually plant beehives on Ginger Island and if you set these up with fairy roses you can get your hands on lovely fairy rose honey every couple of days which is the highest setting honey in the game at 952 gold with the artisan profession. Lava eels are a lot more common in the volcano cave than they are in the regular mines. Lava eels sell for a lot of money so if you want to make lots of money through fishing stock up on lava eels. Did you know that you can decorate the sores? You can actually put garden pots and tea saplings down here, meaning more profit for you at the end of the seasons. Did you know you can purchase explosive ammo from Marlin? Explosive ammo is really handy for skull cavern adventuring, as you can very quickly blow up nodes and ascend down through the levels using the master slingshot with explosive ammo. The traveling cart lady is available every Friday and Sunday and she sells some amazing items, for example the rare seed, which you need to grow into a sweet gem berry to get your lovely star drop inside the secret woods. She also sells quality sprinklers, an assortment of fish and other goods that you could use to complete the community center challenges. A very good combat setup is to enchant your infinity gavel here with the artful enchant. This means you can use a special attack a lot faster. Combine this with the acrobat perk and you can spam your special move every few seconds, making you an extremely ferocious opponent to deal with when you are adventuring. Next up, did you know that only 11.5% of viewers that watch my content are subscribed? So if you're in the 88.5% category, subscribe to the channel and help Game Regard grow. I'd greatly appreciate it. So I am going to leave the video there. I hope you enjoyed it. I will upload the next Stardew Valley video in the next day or two, as per usual. Make sure to check out my other videos. If you like 100 day challenge videos, I have three of those on the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.